know yet with our football team, how you can assess them based on the week of practice. We had a good practice on Friday with our defense. I uh, felt like we were prepared. Um, you just, you, you know, I've learned that I've, many times when I was in Pittsburgh and Coach Dick Hoke, who had been there for almost 700 games with the Steelers, and I'd always ask him, it was my ritual, what do you think, what do you think? You know, some days in the warm-ups you'd have a lot of energy and you'd play terrible other right. days you looked awful and you'd come out like game buster so you know I guess the long answer to that question is I didn't see it coming I think that there was a number of circumstances early in the game that caused it to happen like that I mean we had a penalty on a kickoff return that changes the momentum we had a lot of penalties early that I think really affected the course of the game and we had opportunities to make plays and we didn't make them. And, you know, those are all things that I think led to ultimately what happened. But look, there's no excuse. Atlanta played well. We didn't do what we had to do. And perception of our team is going to be what we show it is over the next few weeks. And, and I'm comfortable with that. You know, to a man, the guys are saying in the locker is, hey, look, Atlanta's not 41 7 better than us. So how correctable? is what happened yesterday well first of all let me just say this you know it really doesn't matter whether how much better Atlanta is than us they beat us 41 to 7 and that's that's the facts you know that's on us nobody else um, but I think uh, in like I said a lot of the players have computers we watched the game coming back we had discussion on the plane you know, that's a long plane ride after a game like that and uh, it, it's all correctable it, it, it was really a lot about what we did you know, I'm not going to take credit away from Atlanta. They have a good football team, and they played hard, and they played well. But, you know, we shot ourselves in the foot a number of times. You can't have 15-yard penalties and give them a short field a couple of times. You can't drop balls. You can't miss open receivers. You can't um, miss blocks. I mean, you know, there, there's a litany of mistakes that we made, and I understand we're going to have mistakes, and we're going to be a good enough football team that we can overcome mistakes. I think we did it in St. Louis. You know, probably against the team that maybe wasn't quite as good as Atlanta. But we, we're, uh, we're going to work at it. And I know this, that uh, the talent that we have on this team is going to come out. And I think that we're going to, like I said, we're going to define who this team is over the next couple of weeks. And, and I, I feel very comfortable that we're going to show our fans that we're going to be a good team. You're in the red zone with head coach Ken Wisenhunt. You were, you were asked, coach, in the post game, you know, what was the most frustrating thing for you? And I'm wondering, when you're a head coach, is there ever just one thing that frustrates you? I mean, you're kind of the CEO of, of everything. Does it all equal itself whenever somebody talks about frustrations? Well, to be honest with you, I think you have to be very careful about chasing different avenues of anger during the course of a game. You know, there's a lot of things <laughs> that you can get upset about. And, and I think that you have to really understand that you can't get so focused on one or two things that, that, it, that it colors your perception in the wrong way. You know, there's a lot of people that are going to be looking at you to see how you handle it, and that's important. And I think that which we told the team in the, in the locker room after the game, this is one game, keep your heads up. We put in a lot of work, and, uh, you know, it didn't go our way today. And, you know, there's a lot of areas that I'm very frustrated with that we have to correct. I mean, we can't have a penalty on the kickoff return team like we did. It was an egregious penalty. It mm. was just not one that was unnecessary, and it took away a kickoff return that could have changed the complexion of the game. And wasn't it away from the it return? It was away from the yes. return, yeah. Oh. And it was actually on a double-team block. So even if the player had missed his block, the guy that was coming in for the double-team would have at least hold, held him off enough that it wouldn't have been a factor. And those are the kind of things that you have to fix. You know, we had a number of alignment errors on defense, technique errors. It wasn't so much the physical part of it as it was the mental part of it. And, and that's where you have to refocus. And, you know, look, who knows what it was? I, I don't think that – to me, what's, what's disappointing the most is that that yesterday was not an indication of who the 2010 and Arizona Cardinals are. We're embarrassed. And, uh, you know, generally when this team has been this way in the past, we responded well, and I think that will be the case. As everyone wants to know, Derek Anderson. Is Derek Anderson, in your opinion, is he getting enough help? It takes a team to protect a quarterback. It's not just the offensive line. It's not just the running backs. It's not just Derek Anderson making the correct reads. It's also the receivers that are involved in that. Is he getting enough help at this point, do you think? You know, it, when you have success, the quarterback – gets a lot of attention when you don't have success the quarterback gets a probably even more attention and uh, to be perfectly honest with you it's everybody it's not just the quarterback it's on us as coaches it's on you know every component of our offense Derek has done a number of good things and made some good throws and and he's missed some throws and that's going to happen and I think that you know as we 
go forward in the season, we're gonna we need to hone in better on what we do well and and uh, get better at executing those things. And and that's what we'll do. I mean, we talked about um, what we need to do go to go forward to be better to give Derek better more help, like you said. Derek's not getting enough help, and uh, that's what we're gonna do. On defense, you know, as Wolf noted, there's a lot of leadership on that side of the ball. How much this week will come from the leaders and the team captains and the Joey Porters, and how much has to come from the head coach as you try and remedy things there? Well, I mean, a lot of it's got to come from all of us, you know, myself included. we got to do a better job, and that starts with me, and it goes through our team. But I think that we have a number of leaders on our football team, not just we're in a lot better shape from that standpoint than we ever have been as far as having leadership. And, and uh you know, that, that's going to be a focus for us this week, making sure we get it right. And, you know, look, it's the second game of the season. We didn't play well on the road. It's the second opener against an opponent, which is as tough an environment you can play in. Um, and we have to learn from that. And you know what? That's what we'll do. We'll learn from it and we'll move on. And, and uh, we'll have the, the great thing about it is we get an opportunity to play again this week. And, you know, we go out and we play the game that we should play and we do a good job then this game will become a memory, not a good memory, but it will become a memory that, that uh, you know, won't be as, as stinging as it is right now. Time to look ahead to the Raiders. I don't want to say the word quarterback controversy, but they had a situation where they benched their starting quarterback. How does that affect preparation for you when another team may or may not be settled on who their quarterback is? Well, you have to look at the tape and see. I think you have to try to get a feel for what schematically they're doing. It, it looked to me like they had a running back that rushed for a number of yards yesterday. So I think after seeing our game that obviously they'll try to take the tact of trying to run it against us. So, you know, we've got to prepare <laughs> against some of those runs that we saw yesterday because we know it's coming. This league is, you know what you're going to face. Mm -hmm. Larry said it in the clip a minute ago, you know, offensively we're going to face those blitzes until we show we can handle it. You know, defensively now we're going to face – the run game until we show we can stop it, especially the way that they ran it at us yesterday. And once again, to me, it wasn't so much physically as it was alignment errors, you know, and mistakes. And that's shocking to me because we didn't have those this week in practice. And, you know, I think we just have to look at um, focusing and getting better. And, you know, so I guess the answer to your question is we'll prepare based on what we think they're going to do to us after this game last week and what we think their strengths Most are. Most shocking thing to me was out of the four of us, you were the only one listening to Paul's update. That was pretty <laughs> That shocking. was interesting right there. <laughs> you, guys you guys would learn a lot if you did. That, ex <laughs> that explains the palaver we get every morning. <laughs> Harumph. Wow, Paul. Yeah. You all right? Thank you, Coach, very much. Appreciate it, Coach. My pleasure, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Good luck Coach. against Oakland. Yeah. Coach Ken Wizenot joining us in the red zone here with Doug and Wolf on Sports 620 KTAR.